Greetings, and today we're going to talk about revolution and reform medicine. Give me tea. Okay, and let's just jump into it, shall we? Well, for starters, we got revolutions, a term that many people have heard of, especially in history lessons, but it is still extremely vital to this day. See, a lot of people think of the France Revolution or the American Revolution, maybe the Chinese or Russian Revolution. And surely all of these are revolutions and are great examples of what a revolution could be. But revolutions are not just a thing of the past. It's not just a thing in the history books. There are things happening right now that are part of revolutions. For example, the whole America is on the limit on the borderline of a civil war between the fascist and the anti-fascist. What the Mollus Congress is literally burning. <laughs> well, it was burning. It's not burning anymore because the fire's been put out. And then we got in France, where buildings and state buildings, more specifically, have been lit on fire as well because of the authoritarian laws about not being allowed to record police and the police being allowed to, on the whim, say who is a reporter and who is not a reporter and thereby be able to beat the ones or even shoot the ones who are not a reporter, according to the police. <laughs> And this is still a thing. Revolutions are still happening, and sure, all the examples I've said now are very violent. But a revolution doesn't need to be violent. And we will get into that as well. But first, what is the idea of a revolution? Well, the idea of a revolution is that a society is a radical change, and that a change can't be delayed through any form of reformism, but instead needs a critical turning point, a point of destruction to start up a new society, tearing down the old system to build a new from its ashes. Reasons for a revolution are usually grounded in the perceived oppression, typically economical, social or of the similar, and there are many different views on paths for a revolution to form. Karl Marx saw a revolution to be in the step of a pre-capitalist, early bourgeois, bourgeois and bourgeois democratic, early proletariat and socialist state. He saw these as the steps for the revolution. While another person named Charles Tully instead thought of the steps of a revolution as Coop the Echt, if I can pronounce that, which I totally can't, I botched it. Uh, a top down seizure of power, a civil war, revolt, and the Great Revolution, as he calls it, which is a, a revolution that transforms economic and social structure as well as political institution, such as the France Revolution, the Russian Revolution, or the Islamic Revolution of Iran. You know, the similar, a big political change. Now, all revolutions do not need a civil war. They need civil unrest, not necessarily violence, but they need civil unrest. People need to be opposed off and revolt. And uh, one way of doing a revolution in a non-violent way would be the typical general strike. Now, there are some ups and there are some downs with working with a revolution. Well, one of the biggest up is it's absolutely limitless. You can create whatever system you want after the revolution. And it actually inflicts a great change. There's a lot of downsides to it. For once, you need popular support. You need the vast majority to be able to revolt. It will more than likely create war, if not just war in your country, in the place you're trying to change, then war from outside sources, like the EU, who are a new liberal union, or 
the trade union who will inflict a war against you. Or even worse, you could have the whole American against you, where it's got atomic bombs. On top of that, you need to actively work against corruption to spread amongst you. And that is probably the hardest part. And to make sure the corruption is not spread, you need to have a clear view of who you should organize and institutionalize your society. And a revolution. Nay, we got all the alternatives to revolution, if you would so please. And one of those would be reformism. Now, reformism is typically seen as the opposite of revolution. Reformism is the idea that changing a society too quickly might have unwanted side effects, and that it therefore is better to transfer uh, the society step by step in a much slower fashion. There are, of course, different forms of reformism. The left centre speaks for a slow reform of a society that gradually reforms it into a socialistic structure, or even a communist structure at times, while the right centre instead pres proposed to keep the reforms so that the status quo will be the same by preventing fundamental structural changes. New liberals. And that is, <laughs> in case you were not aware, why new liberals and fascists work so fundamentally great together. Uh, the main form of reformism we will focus on will be the left center form of reformism, as it's more relevant to the comparison of a revolution we are talking about here, because we're on a co communist, well, at least I am, you might not be. The left center speaks of slowly reforming the society. Uh, the governmental and economic structure step by step where the focus will be on human needs instead of capitalists needs. Usually this comes in the form of social democracy or democratic socialism as you might be more familiar with it if you're from the US. Which is not an actual form of democracy and we've gone through that in that video up there. And I would recommend you to watch it, because I'm kind of praise over it, okay? <laughs> and if you want to put an understanding of the term democracy as a whole, it's a great video to start watching. Social democracy is the idea that reforming a society through aids like taxes and a state whose purpose is to help the people to grow more independent and take a part and steps away from a capitalistic system while also playing by the capitalist system's rules as they can sit in power of the state. Uh, changes like uh, cheaper free healthcare and free schools are common amongst social democracies while uh, some of the reformist leftists also propose that public traffic should be free as well, which I would love, I'd need that, personally. Um, now, an interesting take is that some would argue that the Soviet Union was a form of reformism, as the idea of Marxist-Leninism, which is what started the Soviet Union, is to slowly lead the people into being able to be independent by the aid of a strong dictatorship of the prolet, while slowly, slowly creating a more libertarian society as it goes, and finally reaching communism. Obviously, this failed, and I'm aware that they needed to have a revolution to be able to even come to the point where they could start to slowly reform their new society but it's an interesting take and i thought i'd add it into the video now there are of course ups and downs with a reformist society as well well the biggest up if we're gonna want to play by the rules is it's legal reformism is Theoretically legal and theoretically possible. It is easily done 
in the manner that you just fight a little, you check a box and you call it a day and think the politicians will do the deals for you and it isn't very far-fetched as a lot of people would say that a revolution is but there's of course limits and downsides of such a system um, to begin with, you need to play by the neoliberal boundaries and by the neoliberal rules. So you can't inflict greater change because you still need to play by a capitalist system. So it is very, very unreliable and most certainly not going to create a communist society by itself. It is easily a victim of corruption way easier than a revolution would be because we're talking about working inside a corrupted system of capitalism and neoliberalism which will make you corrupted as you sit in a hierarchical system that proposed an elite should use all the power now if you're not familiar with why <laughs> this will corrupt you I would totally recommend reading more into anarchy philosophy and just more into the human reaction to authority and how we react when we obtain authority. Secondly, you need to be elected. You need to have the people on your side still. So, the idea of needing the people is still as needed. You're not going to get away with that. But now the people don't need to do a lot of the work themselves, they can just shake in a box. You need phones to be able to create change because you need to get out to the people through advertisements. And this is not an easy thing to do because most of the time you need to play by the capitalist dirty rules, which will indeed corrupt you to be able to get those phones that will later be able to be used to spread advertisements. And at that point, you, you're already corrupt. So, you start to say a lot of downsides here. And then you got the whole idea of preaching out to the masses. Well, we said that you could ad use ads, but that's coming with the cost of corruption. And coming out to the public, and reaching the masses, it's not an easily done thing. You really need to work on that. And that's something both revolutionaries and reformists need to work on. It is by far the hardest thing to accomplish, especially as the new liberal system brainwashes you into believing that the new liberal system is the most optimal way of forming a society. Let's compare these, and uh, typically, they are seen as total opposites. They can usually be imagined on a spectrum where you have the reformers and you have the revolutionists. And then you can be a mixed match of them. Now, is this really how it's like? Well, no. <laughs> but, yes. Well, the thing is... A revolutionist is a reformist in a way, but a reformist is typically not a revolutionist. A revolutionist needs the aid of reforming a society to be able to get the people on their side and create a form of dual power structure to be able to make the people more commonly used to a non-hierarchical system. Which means they need to reform society to a certain amount. Now, as an anarchist, I don't think that this reform comes from using the aid of the state. I believe that this form of reform comes from aiding each other with mutual aid. Taking care of each other and helping the community. Proving that we don't need a state and authority to tell us to do things. We can do it ourselves. Of course... A revolutionist believes that a revolution is needed, while a pure re reformist believes that a revolution should never be used. And this is what makes them different, and this is why this spectrum can.
tends to like set. But a revolutionist can't reform society endlessly and a reformist will never be able to get out of the new liberal bureaucracy because they're just working within the limits of it. While the revolutionist would come to the point where the people, the masses, have agreed that it's time for a change. A way to describe this concept of having the point where the revolution can happen is a revolution is like an apple. It grows in a tree and it's not ready to be harvested yet. But once it is ready to be harvested, it will not just fall into our casket. We will need to harvest it ourselves. We will need to take the action to take the revolution and make it happen once it's ready. And until then, we got to fight for a better world in a way we can. We need to reform society to some degree so we can get more people on our sides. It's a very obvious fact to me that we need masses with us and if we're not willing to fight for them and help them, then why would they join us? I suppose this is coming to the end of the video actually. Um, yeah, uh, like, share, subscribe, comment, probably what I'm asking you most to do is like and comment and hopefully subscribe as I'm hoping to reach 50 subscribers and if we can do 100 subscribers I will do a Q&A. Now I know that 100 is in a lot and I'm probably going to need to make a shit ton of videos before then but <laughs> I'm willing to do that. I'm willing to do a Q&A once we've reached 100 subscribers. So if you got any questions you want me to ask, if you got any questions you want me to answer, not ask, I'm stupid, and just leave a comment. I will make a poll on my Instagram once it's getting there, but until then, we're just gonna have the comment section and you need to help me with the algorithm if we're gonna reach that goal. So please do. With that out of the way, thank you for watching. I love making these videos and I hope you love watching them. Until later, bye.